Pelvic Posse, and welcome to the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. Thank you all for joining in. I am Dr. Amanda Fisher, pelvic floor physical therapist, so a doctor of physical therapy. And if you end up liking the content on this podcast, or you know somebody who has a pelvic floor who might be dealing with some issues, please share the episode. I would greatly appreciate it. So a little bit about me. I mentioned I am a pelvic floor physical therapist. I went to school for physical therapy. I went to undergrad to get a bachelor's degree so I could actually go into physical therapy. I did my graduate, I'm sorry, my undergrad at the University of Missouri, Mizzou, M-I-Z, go Tigers. Um, And while there, I was actually the athletic trainer, one of the athletic trainers on the sidelines for the Mizzou football team. It was there that I actually thought I was gonna go into sports med physical therapy. So when I joined Rockhurst University, to do my grad school, I thought I was going to be a sports med physical therapist. Lo and behold, I was training for six to seven half marathons a year. I was getting married during grad school. My parents were going through a divorce. I was insanely stressed out. And I know that now looking back, but I developed a lot of poor habits. And with that, had I not been running as much as I had, I probably wouldn't have noticed it, that I started peeing my pants at the age of 21, peeing my pants, straight up leaking urine down my legs while running a half marathon, the Kansas City half marathon to be exact. I remember seeing other runners out there going through very similar situations. And I thought, oh my gosh, I finally made it. I'm a true runner because I'm peeing my pants. And I know that that shouldn't be happening because my heard my mom and my aunts always say like, you know, you're not not a woman until you're peeing your pants after you've had a kid. And that's all very normal. I didn't realize that you could actually pee your pants before having children. Well, around that same time, age 21, 22, I developed pain with sex, pain with intercourse. So at that age, I remember reading Cosmopolitan magazines and being a huge fan of Cosmo, but didn't want to go buy it in the grocery store. So I would share friends um, from college, but reading like all about this orgasmic sex and how things are so great. And I'm like, oh my God, why is nobody talking about the pain in my pelvis that I'm having? To me, it felt like being stabbed by sharp knives. I was in tears. I was grimacing. I was crying. I did not want to have sex. I felt broken. I was ashamed. I was like, why is my husband with me? You need to run back um, because I'm broken and you don't want that in your life. And I just all these miserable feelings. And then one of my doctors told me, you know what? Go have a couple glasses of wine, Amanda. Have a couple glasses of wine. It'll help you relax. And so I did. I tried it. I had a couple glasses of wine. Well, that only made me like want to pass out. I wanted to snuggle up on the couch with a blanket and I fell asleep. So, you know, none of that hanky panky stuff was happening in the bedroom that night because me and I had too much wine. So I continued down this road of dealing with my symptoms on my own until I went to a physical therapy conference out in San Diego and with my PT class, my physical therapy class. And we had to go to a specialty in every area of physical therapy. So you've got geriatrics, you've got pediatrics, you've got sports med, orthopedics. um, And then you had women's health at the time. It was called women's health, not pelvic health. So the night before this class, um, it was an 8 a.m. class for women's health and peeing your pants or something. And basically at the bar with some classmates of mine, we had all had a couple beers and none of us wanted to get up for this 8 a.m. class, but two of us had to show our faces there. So basically pulled the short end of the straw and myself and another classmate ended up going to this 8 a.m. class while sitting in the class. And it was, I don't know, something with orgasms was in the title, but while sitting in the class, I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, this person's running and peeing their pants. I do that oh my gosh, this person in the study is um, having pain with intercourse. This person's having diminished orgasms or has never orgasmed before. And I just kept thinking this was so relatable. Long story short, I went on with this classmate of mine and we started studying pelvic health the next semester that we could get into class. I remember us writing different 
um, pelvic health CEU courses, continuing education courses, and asking, would you allow a student in? We have not graduated yet, but we would love to learn about women's health pelvic floor issues. And so we did. We went over Christmas break and went out to Chicago and both her and I decided to study and learn all these things about peeing your pants and prolapse. And I'm learning all these muscles in the pelvis that I, while in PT school myself at Rockhurst, nothing against Rockhurst. It was just times back then we weren't being taught those muscles in school. So I was going on my Christmas break away to go learn these muscles and study and take a practical so that I could walk away with the CEU hours. And her and I both from our class were the first two to go out and actually try out pelvic health. She went on into the army and is now teaching and doing research there on pelvic health, which I think is amazing. And then I myself went and begged my first boss to let me start a women's health public health program at their clinic so I could learn and really try out my skills. And I, I got to do that. Thank goodness for him, or I don't know where I would be today. And then I have had quite a journey of moving on into a specialized clinic while having children, then into corporate America. Then while in corporate America, um, I decided, you know what, I need to go open my own practice. And that kind of transition because my husband travels or traveled a lot pre-COVID with his company. And we have three kids. I mean, three boys who are all two years apart each means a very busy schedule. And I needed more flexibility. So I decided to open the clinic, Empower Your Pelvis, my own clinic. And it's called Empower Your Pelvis because I mentioned earlier that I was dealing with negative emotions around my pelvic health. I felt abandoned, not in a bad way, just he wasn't abandoning me. We just don't, didn't know how to communicate it. So abandonment is kind of where it was. I felt ashamed, guilty, pain, discomfort, alone. And I didn't want anyone else to feel that way. I wanted to provide empowerment, hope, safe, everything that women can really, and men and anybody with a pelvic floor can come out of pelvic health, feeling more positive around it and more optimistic, knowing that there's help with their issues. So that came into the Empower Your Pelvis Pelvic Floor Physical Therapy Clinic in South Kansas City, Missouri. We've been open five years now, and I have absolutely loved every minute of it. We opened up originally in a small, tiny closet in somebody else's physical therapy gym. From there, we grew into a smaller practice about 1,200 square foot with three treatment rooms. And COVID hit, we shut down for a little bit and then popped back up and grew into a bigger space that now we're in about 3,100 square foot here in South Kansas City. While here, we've had my vision, my dream has been to normalize pelvic health normalize pelvic health in our community, but then with social media, help really normalize pelvic health internationally. I've really had such a fun time working on Instagram and TikTok, spreading my wings and really sharing about pelvic health, what it is, how we can improve it, but doing it in a fun and educational way that I wanted to see. You know what? My goal has been to really touch about a million people in a year. That's what I wanted. A million people in a year and educate them on pelvic health. But then with the help of social media, I was noticing pre-April 2022, before I started getting um, flagged on Instagram, I was noticing I was hitting about 4 million views in a month of my account getting out there, which is amazing. Most of my videos or a few of my video videos, even on Facebook, was hitting like 18 million views. TikTok, a couple of them, uh, quite a handful actually, had hit over a million views. And same on Instagram. So I was realizing man, I need to really expand this vision. And we need to tap into more ways of where we can reach not only 1 million in a year, but if we were hitting 4 million in a month, can we continue to do that month after month? So that is really my vision behind the podcast is can we continue to spread educational health on pelvic, on the pelvic health and pelvic floor issues? Can we interview past patients or people who have taken our online courses on where they were before and then with our education and where they are after. And then really interviewing expert people in the field and what they're doing to really help out in the pelvic health world. So I'm really excited about this, but to be able to reach my goal, I'm gonna need your help 
to help share these episodes, subscribe to the channel, put a review in and really help me spread my word and the word of everyone else on this podcast. I thank you so much and appreciate you if you could do that. So please join and subscribe to our podcast, like it, give us a five-star review and tell us why it's a five-star review. Like, what did you like about the episode? What do you like about the energy on this show? What do you want to hear more of? Let me know. All right. Thank you all again for joining in. I'm Dr. Amanda Fisher, pelvic floor physical therapist, owner of Empower Your Pelvis. Hey, pelvic posse. I want to thank you so much for joining into this week's episode of the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. Can I ask you a couple of favors, please? Number one, can you like and subscribe to this podcast so that you can continue to empower your pelvis forever so that you will never miss out? Number two, can you leave us a rating and a review telling them how amazing we are and everything that you have learned about your pelvic health? And then number three, if you haven't seen the video version of this podcast, you can go over to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash empower your pelvis for all your visual learners out there. We have all types of great visuals in there for you to not only listen to, but to also watch. Thank you so much again, and make sure to give your pelvis some love. Until next time, peace out pelvic posse.